My name is Maisha Bahati. Uh, I am the co-owner of Crystal Nugs. We are the first women-owned and minority-owned women licensed cannabis delivery here in Sacramento. Uh, we also hold the only cannabis event organizer license in Sacramento. Wow. Okay. So how long have you guys been in business? Well, we opened in March. So it's been about eight months since we've been live. Uh, we started the process about three years ago. So we got licensed in December 2018. Uh, we started the process right after Prop 64. So we were like, we got to figure this out. Uh, it took us a year to find a location. That was the hardest part. And we were looking every day, just every day, every day, trying to get property. And there were just so many shenanigans involved. We had people who were asking for like $100,000 down. And we were trying to figure it out. We tried to buy property. We were just priced out. So we posted on Facebook. Uh, there's a cannabis group on Facebook. We posted about property. We got some leads. Um, we were lucky to be able to get us a lease. Um, took us about eight months from the time we signed the lease. We signed our lease in April 2018 and licensed in December 2018, opened March 20, uh, 2019, and here we are. <laughs> here we are. Thank That's you. That's a pretty long process. Oh yeah. Um, it was intense. But it's doable, and we did it all ourselves. We did not, uh, we financed it all ourselves, you know, savings. We have a couple other businesses that we were able to pull from, but um, all ourselves financed. Um, it's been a road, it's been a road, it's, it's, it's been a road, but a good thing. Um, cannabis is great. It's been great to us. We've been maneuvering. Uh, we decided to go with black owned and women owned. Um, I had talked to a marketing rep and just getting some feedback from her about like how can I market ourselves in this cannabis and she said why don't you mar you're a woman she's like why don't you why aren't you marketing to women like they are 80 percent of the consumers if you can get women on your side you're you're going to succeed and you're a black woman so I was nervous about the let's just do the black owned because I didn't want to steer anybody away I didn't know I didn't know anything about cannabis um, I have a fashion background so uh, but I said, that's what sticks out. Like, there's none of us that exist. Um, and it's been great. It's been great. We got a lot of positive feedback. Like, women like that there's women in cannabis. They feel a lot more comfortable. They feel like they can relate. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if you've ever been to a dispensary. I haven't. Um, but from what I told, it's very just male, kind of dominated. It's very just dry, very just. So it's intimidating for people, especially if you, if you don't smoke. Some people just want like CBD relief. Everyone's kind of coming around to this. It's CBD. People are curious, but they want to be in a comfortable way. And I think that that's what women in cannabis kind of present this comfortable approach to um, cannabis and, and, and the history behind it. You know, you don't feel it's still a stigma behind it. Um, I try not to put that out there to people. I try to make them feel like it's comfortable. Everyone is doing it. It's okay. It's legal. There's a lot of medicinal purposes. So we're kind of teaching as we're getting clientele. And I think that's what helped us grow. It's just, we're kind of just trying to be friends and personable. So what made you, um, and could you tell me your, uh, your business partners mm -hmm. and what made you, uh, and I guess you all decide to get into the cannabis industry? Because you said you have a fashion background. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I have two business partners, Melina Brown and Brian Brown. Uh, we all have business backgrounds in a sense. Uh, prior to cannabis, I was working at the County of Sacramento. I was a social worker and I was doing that for 18 years and I was burnt out. Or I was burnt out. So when we decided to do cannabis, it was kind of like a last ditch effort. Like we, this has to work for us. We were all kind of entrepreneurs trying to you know, we just wanted to, to do it big. We wanted to get into a business where we could grow. And so we put all we could into this, like all we had. There was no plan B. It was like, this has to work. So um, I think what's helped us is that we're not weed people, we're business people. So we are coming, you know, we understand marketing. We understand customer service. We understand, you know, we, we use our contacts. We, we are women, we are minorities. And I think we are promoting that. And we're getting a lot of good feedback with that. So why did we decide to get into cannabis? Because we saw how much money was flowing through. We saw, um, we knew some people who grew. My husband grew on the side. So we had a little bit of insight of just 
the medical part of cannabis and kind of how that was starting. And uh, I mean, we just literally said, let's try. There was nothing that really happened. It was just kind of like, here's an opportunity. Let's see what we can do. And there we started. And we just kind of, you know, we just kind of kept growing, kept growing. We had no plan. We didn't know how much anything was going to cost. We just kind of dove in and, and we just hung in there. So, yeah, if you don't mind me asking, cost, because I was on the city's website and I pulled up that fee table mm -hmm. and I was like, woo, like $20,000, so. $9,000 for this, that, and the third. I, I mean, how much money did you guys put in just to start? Um, you know, gosh, I can't remember. Um, we might have opened with maybe between 60, just say 60,000. Mm -hmm. And that was deposits, that was insurances, that was platforms. I mean, that was what we had to do literally to open up the door. Um, we didn't come in with 100,000. We, we came in with personal credit. We came in with a little bit of savings and we just built from there. Um, so I know a lot of people are very intimidated by pricing. That's all you hear about cannabis. It costs this much, and it is. It's very expensive, but um, what I like to stress to uh, people, especially being in the core and, and being with people who don't have that kind of resource, is, you know, we, we, you can get in the door, you know, with the minimum and just grow from there. Like, don't be intimidated. Don't think because you don't have $100,000 that you can't get in the building. No, you'll figure it out. But, I mean, that was delivery. That was a non-store. That was also, you know, two years ago. Right, right. Um, leases are more expensive now. Uh, property deposits are more expensive now. Product is more expensive now. There's the cultivation tax going up in 2020. So it's a lot more expensive to actually maintain. Um, we, we, you know, we've just been hanging on. <laughs> I found out about the core probably October of 2018. So that it was just, it had not come into fruitation yet. There was some talk that it was coming to the city. So I had followed it. I remember I had signed up through the city of Sacramento, November 18th of 2018. And um, kind of had read about it, how it had come out in Oakland and San Francisco. And I knew that it was to help minorities and cannabis. So um, I probably got contacted maybe six months after I initially applied. Um, by the time I got, oh, it was an application, pretty standard. You had to provide, um, I qualified of low income. Um, so I submitted eight years of paycheck stubs, um, you know, had all my information together. I got accepted in the first cohort. Um, I think the core program is very much needed. Um, I've seen how it rolled out in other areas. Uh, my purpose for being in the core is I want to be the first minority-owned dispensary. Um, I didn't get, you know, I didn't use the core to get my license with the delivery and the event, but when I got in here, I said, you know what, in order for me to expand, you know, I'm going to need some assistance, I'm going to need some push. I, I, we barely got in the door as it is. And trying to expand in cannabis right now, it, it, it's insane. So I thought, okay, the core, I qualify. Um, you know, let me, let, me, let me see what I can do. Let me use this to better myself. And um, it's been a commitment. <laughs> I've been in the program since, God, I think I started the program in September. Um, and what kind of things are you learning or do they have you doing in the program? You know, we learn a lot about the regulations. Uh, we learn a lot about pretty much seed to sell. So they're teaching you about, you know, cultivation, manufacturing, production, all the way down to the resale side. They're also introducing you to um, resources, lawyers, um, BCC, that, that's huge. Just trying to get in contact with someone with the BCC can be very hard. So the core kind of presents that to you. You have these people right in front of you. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You have industry experts that come in. So they're giving you firsthand knowledge. I mean, that, that, we didn't have that. We were just blind leading the blind. Um, and you get the priority processing. For me, because I'm already in business, the core pays two years of my BOP um, from the city, and that's $9,700. Um, they also pay the event license fee, I believe, so that's another 5000 So there are some benefits, um, but right now, the whole dispensary and, and opening it up to core, that, that's really important to me. So that was my ultimate goal in core. Um, so... 
today. Tiffany, I'm going to ask Tiffany this anyway, but okay. <laughs> uh, do you think the program goes far enough in terms of making the city's cannabis industry equitable and diverse? No. Um, there's a lot of resources available, but my concern is um, that's not enough. Uh, I got in, I mean, most of us got in this program either because we uh, were poor or we were, you know, had marijuana convictions. So to, we're in this program because we, we, we can't afford to get any other way. So how do you expect us to, to open a business um, if we have no resources? So um, there has to be some sort of monetary resource for us to be able to expand. Um, I was fortunate to get in here because I had, you know, some businesses going, but that's not everybody's story. And the majority of people that are in court, you know, we don't have $100,000 and they don't have $50,000 to put down. So um, it's great that the program exists, but you got to do a little bit more for us. If not, what are we doing? You're, you're kind of setting us up to fail. Because there's absolutely no way that if you don't have enough resources, um, financial, you know, property, um, you're not going to make it. You are not going to make it. This is a really tough industry. And add minority and add woman, like you got a road ahead of you. So, um, you know, the core is going to have to kind of do a little bit more for, for the, the candidates in this program. I mean, you know, we need that. We need that to survive. We need that to grow. There are some of us in this industry but not enough to really build kind of like an empire. Um, we need more licensing, and I think the core needs to really put some money behind that. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that, or I feel like you do obviously think that because you know Tiffany and you know she has the corner and everything. Mm -hmm. So do you think that Volcana uh, can help close some of the gap in terms of like connecting people and letting people know what resources are out there that are available to them? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I met Tiffany, uh, she was putting on an event and she asked me to speak and I went and it was at the Brick House and I remember going and it was people lined up and I was like, wow, she has a huge following. And I just listened to her talk, she's very well spoken, which I really appreciate it, especially in cannabis, um, to have an educated black woman out there speaking for us. It just, it just felt good. The following felt good. So um, absolutely, I mean, she's connecting women who want to be in the program with women who are in the program. To know someone in cannabis is like a gold mine right now. It, it truly is because you're you're not gonna get it from anywhere else. I mean, it, it's it, it's just not. So um, there are a lot of women who are trying to get in here, and if they see someone doing it, it just I don't know. It's like a you just feel comfortable. You feel like okay, I can do it. You have the support. And I think that's important. That's very important. So what is it like being um, in Sacramento's cannabis industry as a woman? You know, um, I've embraced it. Uh, very far and few do you see people of color, especially women. Um, but you know, I own it. I, I have a certain confidence that I when I that I bring to these events. I let them know that I am, you know, I'm a force to be reckoned with, and I'm going to bring in my resources. Um, You know, I'm proud to be in cannabis. There's a room for us. I, I am very clear with that. Um, I try to show up as much as I can. I know there's not a lot of us, but there are some of us. And I think it's important that we show our presence. And we speak and then we let them know that we exist. Um, it's fun. Cannabis is fun. It's so a cool what industry. Advice, uh, what advice would you give to um, someone, a woman of color specifically, who wanted to get into the industry but just kind of feels like you said like I don't have fifty thousand dollars to put down or I don't really know where to start I'm not up on all the uh, policies and things like that um well what I would say is first of all um there's so much room in cannabis for growth I mean there's so many untapped markets in cannabis you don't necessarily have to have a license you can have an ancillary business you may be good in marketing you may be good at building websites um, there's so many opportunities to grow in cannabis. And I don't want women 
to feel like if I don't have a license, I can't be a part of this. That's absolutely not true. Um, this market is wide open. And women are needed. I mean, like I said, we are the consumers. We tell our husbands, you should buy this. You, should. you know, that's how it works. Um, we're needed. I think we would do very well. Um, I would just say keep going. I would say get in where you fit in. If you don't have $100,000 to get a license, that's fine. Maybe you have marketing skills. Maybe you want to make edibles. Connect. Align yourself with people in the business. That's how you get in. You, you start communicating. What do you have to offer? What can you do? Uh, okay, maybe we can use you here or, God, the, the sky's the limit. I just want to let women know the sky and cannabis is the limit. There are so many opportunities. We need to see some now. We really do. Um, it's doable. I did it. I, I quit my job in August. 18 years on my job, I quit finally um, to go full time in cannabis. And I didn't think that was going to happen. So, let me tell you that it's possible. Um, anything with weed is great. I mean, if you think of anything as far as career, you add cannabis to it, that's a market for that. So I just think women, we just need to expand. Don't get so caught up in the licensing and the regulations. There's a whole world that, for cannabis. I mean, you know, there's advocacy, there, there's, God, there's marketing, there's just packaging, there, there's, Promo, there's just all kind of thing, you know, being lawyers and, and, and the health with CBD is really getting big. You, there's just so much room for growth. Please don't get discouraged by the pricing. Get in where you fit in. Find what your niche is. Find your market and capitalize off of that. So can you tell me what a typical day is like here at Crystal Moon? A typical day. Well, we get orders. Um, we open at 9 o'clock, so we start getting orders at nine o'clock, we fill them. Um, we carry a variety of products here. Uh, flour, our main seller, um, edibles, uh, topicals. Um, I'm coming out with my own pre-roll line. I was fortunate enough to um, get the attention of a manufacturer who wanted to kind of grow and offered me an opportunity to white label. Um, no one is doing that right now. Um, so I took advantage of it. So that's gonna be pretty exciting. Uh, but a typical day, we're just, uh, we have about four delivery drivers that we recently hired. Um, so we're picking up, we're taking up speed. Uh, we do about maybe 30 to 40 hour orders a day. Um, that's pretty big being open seven months and we strictly run off our own website. So you order from our website. Um, we get to you within an hour, hour and a half at best, but, uh, um, Customer service is great, um, but yeah, we, we offer all kinds, vape cartridges, pre-rolls, edibles, uh, flour, um, bath bombs, uh, topical, just anything you can name. Like there, there's a product for everyone. And you quit your job, so I'm guessing you guys are profitable. <laughs> Things are doing, we're doing well, we're doing well, but we, we worked hard too. We, we worked very hard to get here. Um, but, you know, we, we found our niche. I think we found our market. We found our clientele. We kind of found what people like. And we're just, we're rolling with that. Um, you know, like I said, we came in as business people. We were the first to partner with a major brand for a billboard, billboard campaign. We had about 18 billboards running. Um, we just finished that campaign. You know, we're getting, gearing up for our event, cannabis event. We're getting our event license going. Um, that's a whole nother process in itself, but so far so good. Um, so we're just, you know, we got our hands full right now. Next year is going to be a big year for us. Um, that is our, our, we're putting on our first event, September 26th. Uh, we're signing our contract with Cal Expo. Um, we're putting on the first ever comedy joint. So it's going to be a cannabis infused comedy show. Um, seating 4,000 people. So it's going to be really big. Uh, We've been working on it about four months just with Cal Expo. We still have to get city approval and state approval. And um, we're kind of the first ones doing this type of event here in Sacramento. So we're having to deal with the, you know, the regulations. And again, we're trying to break down more barriers. Um, part of my core participation is to also push that event license and let them know that, hey, Here's a whole different entertainment market that we are opening up and, you know, let, let's work with us so we can expand. 
Um, so we're really putting a lot into that event because we feel like that's really going to grow. And, you know, we want to do like infused dinner parties and, and infused fashion shows. I mean, there's so much you can do with this event license. Uh, but you just kind of get through the door first. So, you know, it, it's... It's not an easy process. It, it's a lot of risk involved uh, because, unfortunately, the state doesn't approve these until the last minute. So you got to put a lot of money in and just kind of hope it happens. So, um, so we're doing that fight, but um, you know we are going to have our own line. I'm, I'm marketing my own brand, so pre rolls, um, flour. So that'll be in the market as well, and hopefully we will uh, do some work with these dispensaries. Hopefully you know, we'll be working towards opening a dispensary. So this is all happening next year. <laughs> hey, I was going to ask you if you wanted to have an actual dispensary. You know, um, I want to go as big as I can go. Um, when I got into cannabis, I didn't have a plan. Like, okay, I'm going to have a dispensary. I didn't know anything about cannabis. I just, it was a business opportunity. I took advantage of it. Um, but being in it, especially as a black person, and when you really look at, like the war on drugs. I mean, you really look how black people were treated when it comes to cannabis. And now look who's profiting off of it. We are nowhere to be found. That is insane. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go as far as I can go. And I'm going to get whoever's going to push me. And if the core is going to push me, I'm going to go with them. But, um, and as I grow, I'm going to bring people in, which is what I've been doing. We got um, a black owned security company that I found. They've been working for us for the last four months now. Um, you know, we give people an opportunity that otherwise wouldn't have an opportunity in cannabis. So that's why I think it's important for the core to put us out, you know, to, to get behind us and push us because we're bringing in the community. Um, so I'm just trying to go as big as I can, girl. <laughs> Whatever opportunities come up, I mean, my, my plate is full. I'm just. You want to do this, you want to do this, you want to do this. And as I grow, I'm going to bring my people in. And I'm going to keep growing, I'm going to bring my people in. And before you know it, we're going to be this empire. That's my plan. So one more question, just piggybacking off of that. Mm -hmm. How would you describe uh, the cannabis industry? Since like you were saying, how we were treated during the war on drugs, and we have all these marijuana convictions, and now the bros are getting all the cash money from the marijuana industry. So how would you describe it? Um, someone, again, who, who had no connections with cannabis prior, um, it's very political, very political. Um, you don't really know who to trust. You don't know who, who's for real, who's not for real. Um, I just decided, or we decided as a business, we're just gonna, we're, we're, we're gonna play, abide by the rules. You know, we're gonna stay clean. We're gonna, you know, just keep our nose clean and we're just gonna expand. We're gonna stay away from any kind of drama. You know, we're just gonna run business as we should. Um, you know, it's tight, it, it, the regulations are tight. You know, people are trying to keep their head above water at this point. You know, anyone who got their license, and it was about 10 of us who got our license together. Um, you know, you don't just get your license and you're just balling out of control and you just got money. It's not like that. Like, you literally have to, you know, everyone's hanging on. I mean, you're, you're, you're paying taxes at the Wahoo. Like, every time you turn around, you're paying taxes. Um, you know, you have a lot of these outside counties, El Dorado Hills, Folsom, who don't want us there. So they're constantly, you know, petitioning to the city council to keep us out. So we're still fighting to exist. And, you know, at the minority aspect of it in core, you're still trying to build... You know, there's roadblocks, so we're kind of fighting a lot of battles right now. Um, the blind leading the blind is kind of how I say cannabis is right now. You're just, every day is changing. Every, you just, every day is changing. You just kind of have to stay focused. So, you know, I just, I got a little plan and I'm just sticking to it. But, um, you know, I'm getting more involved in city council. Uh, recently joined the Black Chamber of Sacramento. So I'm trying to put cannabis, um, out there and present it, not how most of us see it. Yeah. You know, uh, we are women, we are educated, we, we got ourselves together. You know, cannabis is not, you know, a stoner drug. I mean, it, it's professional people use it, everyone uses it, it's okay, it's legal. So not only am I trying to crush the stereotype of, of what cannabis is, I'm trying to present, you know, minority women as 
very professional in this business and we can handle it. So yeah, I'm trying to keep a safe face for uh, <laughs> the outside, but we can make it. We can make it in this industry. Is there anything else? Is there anything else, Stephanie? Yes, all you girls. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> um, cannabis is fun, though. I mean, how I look at cannabis is I think this is like the dot com era when we were all probably younger. This will probably be the biggest industry in my lifetime, cannabis. And it's just started. So I just, I always encourage people like, you guys got to get in this and you have to figure it out. Um, this is where it's at and there's just so much room and it's so new and people there's still laws being developed so it's, it's like what better time especially as a minority and as a woman oh my god you get in this industry you are going to grow we support us I support us if you're a woman owned in the cannabis come show me what you got show me your product because I know how hard it is so um, you know all these products these are all women owned like, was that purposely that you did that? Um, I think I added a female touch to cannabis. Um, you know, you can go on weed maps, for example. I don't know if you're going to find a lot of bath bombs. I don't know if you're going to find a lot of topicals. You know, I don't know if you're going to find, uh, you know, just that femininity. You're not going to find that. You're going to find just flour. And I'm sorry, it's just, it, it can be intimidating. Not everyone smokes flour. Not every... I don't know, it's just a feminine touch that I think we present and I think is needed in this industry. So, last word, last question. Why do you think this industry needs and should welcome more women of color business owners? Because we kind of pioneered this industry. You know, a lot of people, their first exposure to cannabis was in the hip hop culture. So, I don't know, you, you really have to like just know the history literally of the war on drugs and just how marijuana just came to be and how we as a culture embrace that and put that out there. And now we just have, we, we have no, no, no stake in that. We have no way to promote that now that it's legal. I think that's insane. So I, I, I and it's room, I mean, it, it's marketing, it, it, it's, it's a product. You know, we market the best to us. Um, you know, it's more, and a lot of people are into the whole medicinal purpose of cannabis. You know, a lot of women are trying to embrace that. And I just, there's just so much room. I wish I, I could tell you guys how much room there is in marijuana, um, in cannabis for women of, of color. But gosh, I, I, please, if you have any kind of niche, figure it out, get in this industry.